Hello and welcome to Baggers View. I'm Paul Bradley and I'm joined on the phone now by West Bromwich Albion correspondent Chris Lipkowski. Hi, Chris. Hi. Well, uh, uh, the players are back in training now at uh, West Brom. But give us, first of all, give us the, uh, the latest news on Blackpool's David Vaughan and um, where uh, West Brom got with that. Well, he's not come in, basically. Um, he, uh, he came to the training ground earlier this week on Monday to meet Dash with some, some of the medical staff. Um, I'll be claiming that basically they, they've got enough midfielders. Um, they want to prioritise and relocate funds towards a goalkeeper and a striker, which are two main priorities. It, it does beg the question why they sort of persisted with this for so long, if that was the case. But I think it's uh, one of the reasons I think George Thorne really impressed and uh, during his recent England outings, and, and he had a decent end of the season, as it was anyway, uh, with the reserves and the youth team. So... They've also got their own uh, Jack Collison of West Ham, who's more of an all-rounder than David Vaughan. So I suspect that if they do add another midfielder, then it might be somebody like that, somebody who can do a little bit of everything, uh, whereas David Vaughan was perhaps a little bit pigeonholed as a, as a more holding defensive midfielder. You mentioned there the, the striker and the keeper that uh, West Brom would be looking for. Are there any targets at the moment which they're, they're strongly chasing? Well, of course, the, the goalkeeper one is the, the, the main one that seems to be happening at the moment. They need to replace Scott Carson. They've only got Boaz Myhill and Luke Daniels. Well, Myhill wasn't particularly rated by, um, by Roy Hodgson. He was dropped after his first game, and he only really played that game because Carson was ill. So they need a new goalkeeper. Shea Givens really rejected him. Uh, the other names mentioned, Thomas Kuschak, potential, uh, as his uh Green from West Ham and, and Steve Harper, who I suspect is probably least likely of those three at the moment, simply because he, I believe he's quite settled in, in Newcastle. Um, they've been linked with uh, Jürgen Macho today. That, that won't happen. He's simply not one of the names on the list. Um, likewise, Ben Foster, who has been made a bookmaker's favourite to join West Brom. And where that's come from, I don't know, because there really isn't or doesn't appear at this stage, certainly, to be any interest in Foster, whether that will change over time remains to be seen. But at this moment in time, there are no plans by Albion to, to pursue that one at all. And just lastly, Chris, uh, West Brom back in training now. How important is this pre-season for them? And what sort of things is Roy Hodgson going to be focusing their minds on, on ahead of the start of the uh, the August start of the season? Well, it is, it is very key, actually, this pre-season, because Roy didn't get an awful lot of time to do much with them after he came in, he uh, he had one or two international breaks where pretty much the, the squad was depleted anyway because of uh, call-ups to players. So this period is key. Um, it, it seems quite strange to say that it's the first proper opportunity he's had to work with them, having been in the job since February. But that is, in fact, a reality. And we'll see the, the West Brom that we see sort of during pre-season, certainly at the start of the year or, or start of the season, will be very much... The, the team and lineup that Roy Hodgson has probably wanted to implement since he came in, but only now he's getting that opportunity to put his methods and ideas into place. And it's a key, I suppose, for West Brom to get off to a very good start, and they don't want to fall into the trap of, uh, of the second season syndrome, as it's sometimes called. Not at all, and, and they've been handed a fairly poor, uh, sort of dealt a fairly poor hand really in terms of fixtures to have the the. the Premier League champions and the runners up uh, on back to back weekends, and then Stoke, and then the two promoted clubs away. Um, it, it's going to be tough, tough call for them. Um, if they can come out of that with six points, I think they'll have done well. So it's going to be a tough start for them, but it's it's important they maintain, um, try and maintain the momentum from last year. Really, I think the three promoted clubs give them a lot of hope. Uh, with all due respect to Norwich, QPR um, and Swansea, they, they don't seem to be making the kind of progress in the transfer market that West Brom and Newcastle made last summer. And even Blackpool really surprised us all. But they were ultimately relegated. And I think the three promoted clubs are going to find it a lot, lot tougher this season. And that can only help help, you know, I feel. OK, Chris. Well, thanks very much for your thoughts today. Thank you. All the best. We'll be back again soon with more baggage for you.